Hey there, Commanders. This week is a community goal holding pattern. Week three of the Colonia Bridge Initiative is continuing basically as scheduled. The only rewards on offer this week are a white engine drive color and a white carrier drive color for the top 75% of participants, alongside the normal credit stuff. So, eh. I, if you're only really in it for the rewards, this probably isn't a, a very compelling week. Um, I, don't, I don't really care about drive colors. There are people out there who might, so if you're into livery rewards, then this is probably a good week for you. I'm going to give this one a pass. Uh, the reward is not different between the two stations, so whichever one you go to, as long as you're at the top 75% of participants, you'll get the reward. Uh, the Colonia Bridge itself could be considered part of the reward structure since each week the stations get better equipped, although from what I understand, Colonia is falling behind. I'm not sure if they... Uh, actually, I can check right here. Uh, week 2, Alcor got to Tier 2 of 3, and Colonia got to tier, ooh, tier 0. So the Colonia stations are not going to have Pioneer Supplies, a Crew Lounge, or Search and Rescue Services. Yikes. It's not looking good. Uh, week 3, I would imagine we're going to see a similar lack of enthusiasm. Alcor's already at Tier 1. Colonia is at Tier 4, and it's estimating 0% complete in 4 days, 15 hours, and 58 minutes. This community goal has already been going on for about 2 days, so uh, that's not very optimistic. Of course, the uh, Alcor isn't doing much better. They're only estimating 4% complete in 4 days. So there's not any hurry to get into this. The rewards pools are probably not going to be, yeah, the top 75%. 793 to uh, 2,352 units of cargo. Uh, so that's a little bit more than one full load of a Type 9 to secure yourself a pretty good spot. So, you know, about an hour, hour and a half's work of work will secure you whatever this reward is. So it's, it's not as intense as it has been in other weeks. Lore-wise... I don't know. I thought that FDev was going to really ramp things up with the Thargoid conflict, but uh, the Thargoids have basically been pushed out of the bubble for all intensive purposes. The conflict's winding up, and salvation is gone. So I guess we won't be popping the bubble, at least first quarter this year. I suppose that connects to a, a desire on my part for there to be meaningful consequences to gameplay and decisions. Elite Dangerous is a little inconsistent about the way that it manifests them. I mean, sure, you can get randomly blown up by somebody in any system, but all of the systems kind of feel the same. There's going to be a follow-on video about the way that economics uh, in the game translate. Well, not economics so much as the way that politics and player decisions translate to effective gameplay, because I've, I think there's a lot of room for the influence of players on the economy to be realized in more meaningful ways and for systems to behave differently in a game mechanics perspective depending on what type of government and what type of economy they're operating under. So I will uh, go ahead and call it for now. Um, I've got a lot of stuff going on right now that I need to take care of so I have less time to make content than usual which is why there's been some weirdness going on the last couple of weeks with uh, my release schedule. I'm hoping that will smooth out by the end of next week, and I'll start to be able to make longer form content again. Uh, and I'm also working on another project unrelated to Elite Dangerous that I hope to be able to talk about here in the next couple of weeks. Um, I just have to secure some outside help to get everything figured out. So uh, that's all I've got for today. I will catch you guys later.